one shook you, didn't it? It was all going so well, until it wasn't. That's the thing about dreams. They don't ask for permission. They don't follow logic. They just happen. Who's coding them? Because every night, without your consent, your brain writes a full-blown simulation with scenes, characters, plot twists, and somehow convinces you it's real. We've built machines that create art, code, stories. But your mind has been dreaming since before language even existed. Is it possible that the most advanced generative model is still you? To answer that, We'll go layer by layer from biology to philosophy to machine learning and see how deep the rabbit hole really goes. In this episode, you'll discover how your brain actually constructs dreams and why it hides the logic from you. Whether it's possible to reprogram your dreams and hack your subconscious in the process, if what you call reality is just another kind of dream one you haven't woken up from yet. What modern physics says about time, perception, and the illusion of waking life. Whether machines AI can truly dream, or if they're just imitating the shadows in our minds. And finally, how your thoughts habits, and beliefs might already be a kind of code one you can rewrite. And what if starting now, you could begin to write your own? This isn't just about sleep. This is about control, code, consciousness. This is how to code dreams. Part 1 inside the brain. You ever notice how the moment your body shuts down, your mind lights up? You close your eyes, and suddenly you're somewhere else. Someone else, feeling things that never happened, but still feel real. During REM sleep, the phase where most dreaming happens, your brain becomes wildly active. But there's a twist, your prefrontal cortex, the part responsible for logic, control, decisions it dials way down. That's why your dreams can be strange, chaotic, emotional, yet completely believable. Meanwhile, your amygdala, the fear center, stays fully online, which explains why your dreams can feel so intense, so raw. But all of this, this wild theater behind your eyelids, it isn't random. Many neuroscientists believe your brain uses dreams to simulate life, to test, to adapt, to heal. Dr. Rosalind Cartwright found that people who dreamt about emotional pain like heartbreak actually healed faster, like the brain was rehearsing recovery. And in a beautiful experiment at MIT, Rats who ran through mazes while awake were found replaying those same brain patterns during sleep, like their minds were saving, compressing, and archiving the memory. And the wildest part? You don't choose any of it. It just runs. But what if you could tap in? What if you could rewrite it? Part two. Programming the mind. Can we hack dreams? All right. So your brain is doing all this work while you sleep simulating, healing, testing. But here's the question that probably hit you already. Can we do it on purpose? Can we actually program dreams? Well, yeah. There's something called lucid dreaming, where you become aware that you're dreaming inside the dream. And when that happens, you can start bending it. Fly, teleport, rewrite the scene, face fears. But here's the cooler part. Lucid dreaming isn't just a spiritual practice. It's neurologically measurable. In a 2012 study, 
Scientists had lucid dreamers move their eyes in a specific pattern while dreaming and recorded it on EEGs and fMRI scans. They confirmed it. The dreamer was aware, inside the dream, and able to signal back. There's even experimental tech like targeted memory reactivation, where sense, sounds, or subtle cues are used during REM to guide your dreams. Almost like nudging the brain into specific memories or scenarios. And techniques like reality checks, journaling, and even neurofeedback headbands are letting more and more people gain control over their dream state. So no, you don't have to just be a passenger in your mind's nightly simulation. You can become the pilot. But that brings up a much deeper question. If you can shape the dream, how do you know you're not already in one? Part 3. Dream or Reality? What philosophy has been saying for 2,000 years. You can dream and know you're dreaming. You can fly, create cities, speak to the dead. But here's the unsettling part. How do you know you're not dreaming right now? It haunted Plato in his allegory of the cave, where people mistake shadows for reality because they've never seen the source. Swap the shadows for your thoughts and the cave becomes your mind. And way before that, Zhuangzi dreamed he was a butterfly. When he woke up, he wondered, am I a man who dreamed of being a butterfly? Or a butterfly dreaming I'm a man? So is this the dream? Or are dreams the only time you're actually seeing the truth? Let's take that deeper into physics and the architecture of perception. Part 4. How Machines Learn to See. The math behind AI's perception. When we talk about AI dreaming, we're not just being poetic. We're talking about machines learning how to simulate reality. But to simulate it, they first have to see it. At its core, a neural network is a system of math equations that learns patterns. It was inspired by the way neurons work in your brain, but heavily simplified. Each neuron takes some inputs like numbers from an image or a sound wave and does a weighted sum. Don't worry, that just means multiply each input by a weight, add a bias, and run it through a squashing function like ReLU or Sigmoid. It's like adjusting the brightness, contrast, and filtering of raw data to make sense of it. These neurons are stacked in layers. When you stack many, you get deep learning. The big question. How do machines actually learn from mistakes? They use a method called gradient descent. It's just an optimization process, adjusting weights to reduce error. You define a loss function, like how wrong was the prediction? Then update each weight like this. That means nudge the weight slightly in the direction that reduces the error. Now flip the game. Instead of recognizing, can the machine create a new image from nothing? That's what generative adversarial networks, or GANs, do introduced by Ian Goodfellow in 2014. You have two neural networks. One generates fake data. One judges if it looks real. It's a competition. The generator improves until the judge can't tell the difference. That's how AI makes fake faces, dreamlike art, even realistic voices. Behind the scenes, it's all math. Just like your brain builds meaning out of messy memories during dreams. And that's not science fiction. We're not just teaching AI to recognize the world. We're teaching it to simulate it internally, just like a brain does in dreams. 
and we're only scratching the surface. Part 5. Can we code a conscious mind? We've taught machines to see. They've learned to imagine. They even simulate inner worlds now with text, images, motion. But here's the question that burns through it all. Can we write a dream with memory, prediction, and purpose? One theory that explains this well is called predictive coding. The brain constantly guesses what's about to happen and corrects itself. This kind of guess and check process is exactly how machine learning works too, especially in generative models. So how would we build a dream in code? You'd start with generative models like VAEs or diffusion models to create imagined scenes. These are like the visuals of the dream. Then you'd need a temporal brain, something that connects thoughts over time. That's where RNNs or transformers come in, especially newer architectures like MDN RNNs and world models. These simulate how one moment leads to the next, how a story unfolds. And then you'd need intent, some kind of reward function, a goal. Because human dreams aren't random, they're emotional, structured, sometimes fear-based, sometimes healing. Now, let's connect the dots, put it together, and your dream simulator might look like this. A system that doesn't just respond to inputs, but imagines possibilities. But here's the bigger question. If we give machines the power to dream, will they start asking what's real? And who's dreaming them?